really pleased that Andrew Feinstein has agreed again to come on uh, Not the Andrew Marr Show. Um, and uh, Andrew, I, I, it's good to see you. I, I'm just, there's something I'd like you to, to look at. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, we, there was a vote in Parliament this week uh, on the issue of boycott, divestment and sanctions or B, BDS. Um, and the Labour Party pushed for, for abstaining on that vote, which was going to outlaw BDS. Um, and this is a speech from Lisa Nandy on that very issue. I'll just play the, the speech for you. We have provided the government with an alternative. Earlier this year, we sought to amend the, public, the procurement bill in order to ensure that no single country, especially in the cases that we've been describing today, the world's only Jewish state, can be singled out for different standards to others, and in doing so, whip up hate and hostility against the Jewish community. It's a real problem. We provided the government with a solution. They refused it, but we remain convinced that cooperation and consensus is the right approach to tackle what we accept is a very real problem. Now today, the Secretary of State will hear this refrain again and again from members on his own backbenches and across the House, that we should never seek to pick two important principles, the need to tackle racism, anti-Semitism, which is a scourge in our society, and the need to stand up for human rights, freedom of expression, democracy, and our long-standing position when it comes to Israel and Palestine. There's so many issues in what she said. I, I don't know where to start. I mean, first of all, to say, you know, she talks about Keir Starmer's Labour Party's commitment to human rights, democracy, freedom of speech. It's a pity none of those things happen within his own party. We have seen constantly since he's taken over the leadership, the corrosion of democracy within the party, the imposition of candidates all over the country against the wishes of local parties, the expulsion from the party of all sorts of people who happen not to be in Keir Starmer's faction. And, you know, as for a commitment to international law, I don't remember Lisa Nandy, David Lammy, Keir Starmer, or anyone else speaking about the horrific attacks on the Palestinian people in the occupied um, Palestinian territories since they've been in positions of leadership. So that's the first thing I'd like to say. The second thing I'd like to say is that Keir Starmer's Labour Party is, through abstention, allowing all sorts of absolutely appalling anti-democratic legislation that is in violation of freedom of speech, that is in violation of human rights, that is in violation of international law to be passed by this parliament because it doesn't want to oppose anything. They're supposed to be the opposition, but they're too terrified to oppose anything. Then when it comes to the issue of Israel, and specifically the issue of boycott, divestment and sanctions. The Israeli government, members of that government, amongst its most senior cabinet ministers, including the security minister, who is responsible not only for security in Israel, but also in the occupied territories, proudly describe themselves as fascist. But in Keir Starmer's Labour Party, you are not allowed to call them fascist. And in fact, when an MP did in parliament, they had to retract and offer a humble apology. But more important than that, with the government in Israel completely out of control, I mean, we've seen 14 Palestinians murdered in cold blood in the space of 48 hours, including a number of children. What option do we have but boycott, divestment, and sanctions? The alternative is to do nothing. That's what the British government does, and that's what Keir Starmer's Labour Party is proposing to do. The sort of cooperation that Lisa Nandy is talking about is just a new way of describing the Reagan and Thatcher constructive engagement policy towards apartheid South Africa. And what constructive engagement was, was a veneer to hide Britain and the United States of America's covert support for and profiteering from apartheid South Africa. 
So this sort of nonsense of cooperative consensus or whatever they want to call it in the Labour Party towards Israel is simply a PR veneer to cover their uncritical support of the Israeli state. And that brings me to the next point, which is the fact that Lisa Nandy thinks that Israel is singled out and treated differently. Now, anybody who has been on the left will know that the left speaks out against all undemocratic human rights abusing regimes. If you look simply at my research work, which I publish in multiple books, make films about, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at social media, I attack Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as much as I do Israel, because there are many similarities. The fact that Israel is the world's only Jewish state and what Lisa Nandy wants is actually not for Israel not to be singled out. She actually wants Israel to be treated differently from all those other countries mentioned. She wants Israel to be treated with kid gloves. And that in itself is a form of discrimination. She assumes that Israel somehow represents all Jews, that what the Israeli state does is somehow supported by all Jews. And unfortunately, that is profoundly false and incorrect. There are tens, if not hundreds of thousands of Jewish Israelis who are not only opposed to the Israeli government as we've seen through mass protests, but who are actually anti-Zionist. So they are not in favor of the existence of a purely Jewish state. Now, does Lisa Nandy think that those people, even in Israel, should not have a voice, should not be able to criticize? The reality is Israel should be treated like all other undemocratic, human rights abusing, brutally aggressive regimes. So I will continue to attack Israel, to criticize Israel, so long as it practices apartheid within its own borders and continues its illegal and brutal occupation of the Palestinian territories. And so should anybody else who is in favor of democracy, freedom of speech, human rights, and international law. They, they get these people who are like West Streeting and that education woman and her, they're kind of school, schooled in being PR, you know, looking, looking, looking ca caring, looking thoughtful and ca considerate. And it, it kind of, blo it's just so annoying, isn't it? I'm just like. Crispin, the reality is that it's a form of politics that we're seeing from both major parties that resulted in a recent survey by a very mainstream research institute to in its latest report conclude that well over 60% of people in the United Kingdom are completely dissatisfied by what they're being offered by both the major parties. And people are in despair because both major parties are playing this little elitist game every time they open their mouths. They talk the sort of nonsense that we heard from Lisa Nandy, whatever they're talking about. They are terrified to commit to anything that would help people face this dreadful cost of living crisis that most Britons are going through today. They are terrified to say anything that would stop the global abuses we see from Israel, from Saudi Arabia, from the United Arab Emirates, to say anything that would bring peace closer in the occupied territories in Yemen or in Ukraine. They parrot these lines with no conviction with no sincerity, and they honestly think that people buy into this nonsense. Nobody does. And finally, let me say, Crispin, you know, there's been a lot of chatter on social media recently about people who are supportive of Israel, telling others who are critical of Israel to stop accusing Israel of killing children. If Israel stopped killing children, 
people would stop criticize them for killing children. It's very, very simple. But those of us in the UK and elsewhere who honestly believe that there should be peace in the Middle East and everywhere else in the world, that there has to be a peaceful resolution of the untenable situation in Palestine. We've got it every day, especially as the government tries to silence us with anti-boycott bills, with crackdowns on the right to protest, et cetera, et cetera. We have to speak ever louder and with ever greater conviction. We will not and cannot be silenced.